Okay, so local picture. picture. So it's all about getting insight into how the wave function looks. That's what we need to get. And these comments now will be pretty useful. From this equation, you have 1 over psi v second psi v x squared is minus 2m over h squared e minus v of x. Look how I wrote it. I put the psi back here, and that's useful. Now, there's a whole lot of uh, discussion in many textbooks about how the wave function looks, and is it concave or convex, but it depends. And le let's try to make it very clear how the wave function looks. For this, we need two regions. So the first case, A, is when the energy minus V of x energy minus v of x is less than 0. The energy is less than v of x. That's a forbidden region, as you can see there. So it's a classically forbidden, not quantum mechanically forbidden, but classically forbidden. What is the main thing about this classically forbidden region is that the right-hand side of this equation is positive. Now, this gives you two possibilities. It may be that psi at some point is positive, in which case the second psi must also be positive. Because psi and the second psi appear here. If both are positive, this is positive. Or it may be, case two, that psi is negative and the second psi, the x squared, is also negative. Well, uh, how do we plot this? Well, you're at some point x. And here it is. A positive wave function seems to be one type of convexity, another type of convexity for a negative. That's why people get a little confused about this. But there's a way to see it in a way that there's no confusion. Look at this. It's positive, second derivative positive. When you think of a second derivative positive, I think personally of a parabola going up. So that's how it could look. The wave function is positive, up. It's all real. We are using the, pro the thing we proved at the beginning of this lecture. You can work with real things, all real. So the wave function here is x. And here, negative, and a negative opening parabola. That's something like that. So, oh, so nice. So the wave function at any point could look like this if it's positive, or it could look like this if it's negative. So it doesn't look like both. It's not double valued. So either one or the other. But this is easy to say in words. It is a shape that is convex towards the axis. From the axis, it's convex here and convex there. So convex towards the axis. Now, there's another possibility. I want to just make sure you visualize this. Sometimes uh, this looks funny. It doesn't mean, actually, the wave function can look like that. But uh, it's funny because of the following reason. Uh, it's funny because if you imagine it going forever, it doesn't make sense because you're in a classically forbidden region and the wave function is becoming bigger and bigger is going to blow up. So eventually something has to happen. 
but it can look like this. So actually what happens is that when you're going to minus infinity, here is x and this is minus infinity, it can look like this. This is an example of this piece that is asymptoting, and it's positive and the second derivative is positive, or negative and the second derivative is negative. So that's a left asymptote, or you could have a right asymptote in which it looks like this. Again, second derivative positive, positive wave function, second derivative negative, negative wave function. So you may find this at the middle of the potential, but then eventually something has to take over, or you may find this behavior or this behavior at plus minus infinity. But in any case, you are in a classically forbidden, you're convex towards the axis. That's the thing you should remember. On the other hand, we can be on the classically allowed region. So let's think of that. Any questions about the classically forbidden? Classically allowed B E minus V of X greater than zero classically allowed on the right hand side of the equation is negative. So you can have one a psi that is positive and a second derivative that is negative or two a psi that is negative and a second derivative that is positive. So how does that look? Well, positive and second derivative negative, I think of some wave function is positive and negative is parabolic like that. And then uh, negative and second derivative positive, it's possible to have this. The wave function there, it's negative, but the second derivative is positive. These things are not very good, they're not very usable asymptotically because, you know, eventually if you are like this, you will cross these points and then if you're still in the allowed region, you have to shift. But this is done nicely in a sense if you put it together, you can have this in a Suppose all of this is classically allowed, then you can have the wave function being positive, the second derivative being negative, matching nicely with the other half, the second derivative positive, the wave function negative, and that's what the sine function is. It just goes one after the another. So that's what typically things look in the classically allowed region. So um, and in this case, we say that it's concave towards the axis, okay. towards the axis. And that's probably worth remembering. So uh, one more case, uh, the case C, when E is equal to V of X or E minus V of X naught is equal to zero. So we had the negative, the positive, zero. How about when you have this situation where the potential at some point is equal to the energy? Well, that's the turning points there. Those were our turning points. So this is um, x0 is 
a turning point. And something else happens if the right hand side is zero. Um, we have that uh, 1 over psi, the second psi, the x squared, is equal to 0. And if psi is different from 0, then you have that the second derivative must be 0 at x naught. At x naught. And the second derivative being 0 is an inflection point. So um, if you have a wave function that um, has an inflection point, you have a sign that you've reached a turning point. Um, an inflection point on a wave function could be anything like that. Second derivative is positive here. Sec I'm sorry, it's negative here. Second derivative is positive. This is an inflection point. Inflection point. It's a point where the second derivative vanishes. So that's an inflection point and uh, it should be remarked that from that differential equation, you also get that the second psi, the x squared, is equal to e minus v times psi with its constants. And therefore, when psi vanishes, you also get inflection points automatically because the second derivative vanishes. So inflection points inflection point also at the nodes. Turning point is an inflection point where you have this situation. Look here, you have positive, negative second derivative, positive second derivative. The point where the wave function vanishes and joins them is an inflection point as well. Is not a turning point. Turning points are more interesting, but inflection points are more generic. 